Hey, it's Doc Williams, and today we're going to talk about properties of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds will form a crystal structure, also called a crystal lattice. This is due to the electrostatic attraction between the positive ions and the negative ions within the ionic compound. Let's take sodium chloride as an example. We have a positively charged sodium ion bonded to a negatively charged chloride ion. Just because the two ions are bonded together does not mean that the ionic charges disappear. They are still very much there. The sodium side is a positive side where the chloride side is a negative side. This makes up one formula unit. And since we have one sodium for every chlorine, this makes up a formula unit. The positive and negative ends of this formula unit will form bonds with other formula units in an alternating pattern as illustrated in this animation. Here we see the crystal lattice forming, which is also illustrated in this next image, shows the negatively charged chlorine bonded to the positively charged sodium. And we see how the alternating formula units form a very strong structure. This next image better illustrates the bonds that are formed between each atom within this crystal structure. We see that although each formula unit is composed of just one chlorine and one sodium, that all formula units within this structure are chemically bonded together. The electrostatic force that bonds these formula units together within this crystal structure is responsible for our next property of ionic bonds, which is high melting points and high boiling points. The strength of the electrostatic forces holding these together in this structure requires a lot of energy to break these bonds. That results in higher temperatures to reach the melting points and boiling points for ionic compounds. Another property of ionic compounds are that they are generally soluble in water. When we look at this image of this crystal structure of sodium chloride, we see the negative and positive charges that exist within the compound. And water being a polar molecule has a slightly positive end where the hydrogen atoms are and a slightly negative end where the oxygen atom is. When a salt crystal is placed in water, we see that the positive ends of water will surround the negative charged chloride atoms and the negative side of water will surround the positively charged sodium atoms. When this occurs, the electrostatic forces of the water molecule will be strong enough to begin to break apart the individual atoms from the sodium chloride crystal. This will continue until the sodium chloride is dissolved in water. And most ionic compounds that are dissolved in water or melted can conduct electricity. In this first image, we see a solid ionic compound of sodium chloride, which does not conduct electricity when tested. The second image of melted salt where the sodium and chloride ions are flowing more freely allows electricity to be conducted to light the light bulb when placed in this apparatus. The third image is of salt being dissolved in water. Although we have the water molecules, we have the positive ions of sodium and the negative ions of chlorine flowing freely in the water, which the charges are allowing the electricity to be conducted and the light bulb is lit. But when you notice the fourth picture where we do not have an ionic compound, meaning the negative and positive charges flowing freely, the light bulb is not lit. So the property that allows ionic compounds to um, conduct electricity are when the ions are freely flowing, which would be in the melted state or when it's dissolved in water. The last property of ionic compounds that I want to discuss is that ionic compounds are hard but brittle. A illustrates the alternating fixed in place structure of the crystal lattice, which results in a very strong structure. B illustrates that if you apply enough force that you can break apart the crystal structure. And when that occurs, it literally cleaves along the formula unit lines where it shatters, making it brittle. In summary, the electrical charges of the ions that form an ionic compound do not go away when they form the compound. These electrostatic forces of each formula unit will form alternating patterns with other formula units to develop a crystal structure, also known as a crystal lattice. This crystal lattice is a very strong structure. It requires a lot of energy to melt 
or ball, which results in a high melting and high boiling points of ionic compounds. Most ionic compounds are soluble in water, whereas the polarity of the water molecule can be strong enough to eventually pull apart the negative and positive charges away from the crystal lattice. And when an ionic compound is either melted or dissolved in water, the free, freely flowing ions allows for the conductivity of electricity. And the crystal structure of the formula units causes them to be hard but brittle. If this video was helpful, please hit subscribe to be notified when new videos become available.